Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm still sick. I think I'm slightly worse. That's okay. We're going to look at more stories on TikTok. Ghost stories, that is. So, get ready. Because here it comes. Creepy shit my psychic kid has said per 10,000. He asks me, Mom, are ghosts real? I said, yeah, well, I mean, kind of. Mom talks to spirits all the time, right? He says, yeah, but I don't think they're real. I've never seen one. Well, except for that other night, do you remember when I climbed over you and Jameson and I got in the middle because I was really scared? Actually, yes, Wesley, I do. He says, well, that's because the man was staring at me again and he was right by your window. Was he inside or was he outside? He was inside and he was walking toward us. <laughs> Always interesting. I send them away, he brings them back. <laughs> Real ghost photos and their stories. Melissa Smith had a miscarriage after her first child. Shortly after the traumatic event, she catches something disturbing on her <clears throat> baby's night cam. She rushed to the baby's room after seeing this image on the screen. Do you see it? She fears it's the spirit of her unborn baby. When she got to the room, there was nothing. Real ghost photos and their stories. Uh, we're gonna do this one a little different. Welcome to Shit I Wish I Had Never Had Happened to Me. <laughs> Haunted real life stories from. Is she waxing her eyebrows? Some paranormal investigation. I do. Ow. And I am one of the extremely lucky few who can say that I've gotten to spend the entire night in the Goldfield Hotel. The most haunted place in Nevada and probably one of the most haunted places in the world. Ow! Oh, I forgot trigger warning. If you're watching this at midnight or 3 or 3.33 in the morning, shut it down. Watch it in the morning over coffee during the safety of the day. Yeah, you have been warned. Because this shit's scary, yo. The Goldfield Hotel is notorious for having multiple portals to hell and D-word activity. I'm still aching over that. Word means it rhymes with semen and lives down there and starts with a D. But when we left the next morning, we did not leave alone. In fact, almost immediately after getting home, things started getting weird. And when I say weird, I mean scary AF. As a medium, I could tell almost immediately that we had brought home multiple spirits. But that was the least of our worries. We unfortunately had some D-words tag along too. All of which began wreaking immediate havoc in our home and on our family. A woman, a man named George, and two young children, along, like I said, with the D-words. George did not play nice, and the woman was obsessed with my husband. And the D-words started affecting him and working through him as well. So let's get to it. I'll share as much as I can in this video, but I'll have to make a couple of other videos explaining the other stories. I've never been able to figure out what my spirit animal is, and that will tie in later. I'll explain. I will share the three experiences that all tie together. One night I was awoken from my sleep to the sound of my husband screaming. It sounded like this. I shot right up out of bed, but shooting up out of bed, that's all I did. I just sat there. I didn't try to wake him. I didn't try to do anything. I just sat there staring at him when he continued to scream. Guys, I did nothing. After saying this a few more times, Mike shot up out of bed, gasping for air in total panic, all while I just sat there and looked. I had medical knowledge, and the entire time I thought he was having a stroke, but I did nothing. I felt like the worst wife in the world. As he shot up out of bed, I could see pure terror on his face. And there I sat, so ashamed that I had literally done nothing for my husband. And although he was asleep, he knew. And he said, why didn't you do anything? I was so ashamed. Once he gathered himself, he began telling me about this nightmare. He said he thought that I had crawled into bed next to him like I always do and he went to spoon me. But that seconds later he realized whatever it was he was spooning was not me. He said it was like a skeleton, it was so small. When he looked down to see what it was, he saw a creature. He called it a zombie, but I know it was a D-word. And it was laying in his arms going <coughs> trying to get to him. So that's when he began screaming, turn on the fucking light. That's what he was trying to say. He said he finally reached over this creature in order to turn on the lamp. And when he did, it screamed and fled under the bed. Mike explained at that point it sounded like some sort of a dog was under the bed and began shredding it and tearing it to pieces. Like for part two, that's where it gets good. Uh, we're gonna do- Have we seen this one? Like, except she wasn't waxing her eyebrows and doing like, I have an itchy spot. 
you know, like her makeup and stuff. I swear. I gotta show you guys, I'm actually alone. Look at this bullshit. Look at this bullshit. Look, look, look. Turning on the light. As soon as I walk in. Okay. Closing the door. Yo. Yo, I'm telling you, anytime I walk in, there's like literally nobody. Nobody. This has been going on for like a couple days now, dude. Look, watch. I'll turn on the light, okay? Nobody, 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 nobody. Behind the door, nobody, okay? Going through this freaking door, which is just really scary in here. Nobody, 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 nobody. Guys, tell me what the fuck is going on. This is a documentation of me and Chloe. Just in case we die. Yeah. Because um, we watched this video on TikTok about how Lucifer has come to Earth three times. One in the wildfires in Australia, one on the day Corona started, and one on 9-11. Saw his face in the smoke and in the fire. And as soon as the video ended, all the power in the house went off. And we don't know what to do. Because literally, this is what it looks like outside. This is a documentation. Okay. <laughs> I don't want a hot dog. In Sicily, that blinks? Yes, she blinks. This is Rosalie Lombardo, who died of pneumonia in the 1920s at the age of two years old. Rosalie is perfectly preserved, from her external features to her internal organs, but that's not the strangest part. Her eyes are still as blue and flawless as the day that she passed away. She simply looks like a child taking a nap. But this child tends to open her eyes and close them randomly, like she's blinking away the cobwebs. People have come to see her for hundreds of years, and every time, visitors will leave and say, that dead girl is blinking. What do you think it is? That would be super cool if that were true. Did you know that after the Japanese tsunami in 2011, some pretty weird things happened? The tsunami hit northeast Japan after an earthquake, and it was huge. The death toll was around 20,000 people and in an instant people lost their lives, their homes, their livelihoods, their businesses, everything. And in the months and the years that followed, taxi drivers began to report some pretty weird things. They would pick up lone passengers and those passengers would be soaked to the bone and they would ask to be brought right to the devastation zone generally to an address that just didn't exist anymore. By the time the taxi driver would get there, the passenger would have disappeared. This became such a regular occurrence that taxi drivers literally started paying the fares for their ghostly passengers. Those kinds of stories are always so weird. Like those passenger stories where somebody's going somewhere and then they're gone by the time. Like I love those kinds of stories. Sad, though, that it happens, you know, in an area like where a tsunami hit or something like that. That's sad. Has anyone ever seen a ghost? For real? Well, you're not white. I trust you. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. true. Because white people would be like, I feel something. The day 
people four? <laughs> you did an edible the next day? I know, but what did she say to you? Bitch, you hung up on the spirit realm. You were just like, wait. Oh, no, no, wrong number. <laughs> oh my God. Wow, you ghosted your ghost. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> this photo taken of a graduating class might look normal, but somewhere in it, there's an uninvited guest and the story is terrifying. Here you see the 1985 this graduating class in El Paso High in Texas. But if you pay close attention, one of the students looks odd. The girl in the bottom left corner looks pale with no distinguishable facial features. The creepiest part is that nobody there even knew who she was. And none of the other students even saw her standing there. Also, this I was totally right, by the way. Many believe that it was the ghost of a cheerleader who committed suicide by throwing herself off the fourth floor after her boyfriend broke up with her. Over the years, many students have claimed to see a girl jumping from the same floor, but when they run to help her, there's nobody there. I wonder why they left a space for a ghost then. Someone want to explain? This a ghost fools a state trooper into believing he's human. There's a lot of details along this story, so pay attention. I'm going to go fast. He says, I'm a state trooper, and I spend most of my time on the highways, but this time was different. It was July 23rd, 2009. I was on my way back to the barracks to deliver paperwork. I was taking the back roads. I was driving along, and all of a sudden, all the lights in my squad car started flashing, and the car died. Luckily, I was able to coast into the driveway of this old farmhouse. As I pulled in the driveway, I saw this older man walking by the barn. He took a look at me and continued on his way. I remember thinking it was weird that he didn't wave or even look startled that I was there. I tried to start my car a few more times, but got nothing. The next step was to call dispatch and get some help. I tried calling it in, but the radio didn't work. And there was no signal to my cell phone, so everything in the squad car was useless to me at that point. The only option left was to approach the farmer and ask him to use his phone. I got out of my car and immediately noticed the big white farmhouse on the driveway. It looked like it needed a coat of fresh paint, but other than that, it looked well maintained. There was a wooden rocking chair on the porch, swaying in the breeze. This will come into play later. The barn was classic red in color. It too needed a new coat of paint, but it was obvious that it was still functional. I could smell All fresh right. grown hay and cows. I started to head towards the barn as I yelled, hello! And cows. Replied, but as I opened the door, I was surprised to see a milking parlor. I remember thinking how oddly quiet it was because I didn't see or hear the old man. I thought I missed him, so as I turned around to head to the house, I turned around to see the old man standing right behind me. I have to admit, that startled me. I didn't hear or see where he came from. Realizing he startled me, he suddenly asked me, Are you having car trouble? <clears throat> yes, sir, I am. Would you mind if I use your phone? He said, We can walk up to the house, or you could use the phone in the milking parlor, just so long as you don't take too long. He turned to walk towards the house and then suddenly stopped, as if remembering some sort of common courtesy that he had forgotten. And he asked me, Can I get you a glass of water? I said some water would be great. Thank you, sir. He nodded his head and started walking towards the barn, where there was an old phone hanging on the wall. He saw me pick up the phone when he turned around and walked away. I called dispatch. They said they'd have someone there within the hour. When I hung up the phone, he walked back in and handed me my glass of water. As we walked out of the barn, I noticed he was wiping his hands on a rag, apparently to get some grease off. He said, you're not the only one with mechanical problems. I'm working on something, too. He seemed to have a hard time getting his hands clean. I told him dispatch told me they have a wrecker on the way and it shouldn't be too long. The farmer nodded and pointed towards my unit. He said, why don't you let me help you get that up the road so they can find you? He said, they never look in the driveway, so it's best we push it up to the road. As we walked to the car, we passed an old picnic table. He said, you can leave your glass on the table there, son. I forgot I was even holding it. I drank the last of it and set it on the table. He said, you get in and steer, I'll push. Being an ox of an old man, I knew he could do it, but I was reluctant to let an old man push me while I steered. But he stood at the back of the car with both hands on the trunk and eyes facing forward. There would be no changing his mind. As soon as the car started rolling, I jumped in the seat and closed my door. I looked in the rearview mirror and waved as he turned around and walked back to the house. About 45 minutes later, a wrecker appeared to find me sitting in the cruiser waiting for him. 
driver looked up at the farm and said, we have to hurry up with this hookup and get the hell out of here. He seemed very nervous, anxious, and spooked at the same time. It was obvious he did not feel comfortable there. We hopped up in his truck and headed back to the barracks garage. Suspense. The tow truck driver was awkwardly silent. He kept staring at me, looking like he was surprised I had nothing to say. When we arrived back at the barracks, I was surprised to see an audience waiting for us to arrive. As soon as I stepped out of the wrecker, I was bombarded by a crowd of people asking me about my big adventure and how I was doing. Everyone was asking, did you talk to the old farmer? I said I did. He didn't seem chatty or anything, but he did let me use his phone, and he even helped me push my car to the end of the road. Suddenly, everyone's eyes got wide open and their jaws dropped as everyone ran away from me over to the squad car to look at the back of it. I said to the tow truck driver, I said, what's the big deal? He said, you don't know, looking at me in disbelief. No, obviously I don't. What's up? You see, as a state trooper, I knew the streets, but I didn't know the people or the history. He said back in the 70s, a farmer shot himself in that milking parlor in the barn. And that a few families tried to start up the milking parlor, but it didn't last. He told me no one has lived there since the 80s, and it's haunted. I could feel the blood rush from my face. A seasoned officer told me to hop back in the car and let's go for a ride back out there. I told him everything that had happened, but as we pulled up, I noticed things were different. Tree branches had overgrown into the driveway, even scraping on the squad car. That was new. Shutters were falling off. There was no paint left on the barn. And that rocker on the porch was completely busted and rotted got out of the cruiser and walked up to the barn. I glanced over at the table under what was now a dying shade tree and pointed out the glass of water that I just left there a little while ago. As we walked into the barn, there was something else that was brand new. A thick layer of dust had blanketed everything in there. I burst through the so door and went straight for the spooky. phone. It too was covered in dust, but my fresh fingerprints were on it. I picked it up by the receiver and was shocked that there was no dial tone that shook me to my core. I put it back on the hook and said, yeah, we can go now. Turns out this cop was a paranormal investigator on the side, and he was like a kid in a candy store. He had so many questions, and he wanted to do a lot more looking. But he realized how shook I was, and we went back to the barracks. When we arrived back there, curiosity got the best of me, and I had to go check out the back of the car. We both walked over to it and noticed two greasy handprints on the trunk of the squad car exactly where someone would put their hands to push it. That was several years ago now and I don't work that area anymore, but I've driven back to that old farmhouse many times. It has since fell victim to arson and is now burned to the ground. But just being on that land again gives me the creeps. I'll never forget that experience. Farewell, old man. That was a good story. It was a little long, but it was a good one. So in Egypt, um, there's something called an adaha. An adaha is big. You want to say it? It's like, it's like a, I don't know if it's a myth or if it's real, but like a lot of it's people real. say it's real. that they hear her calling their names from somebody else who they love's voice. So like, let's say she, like, Mariam could hear me calling her name through her. So it wouldn't really be me. It'd be her calling Mariam. And she would basically make you like walk all around until she like makes you walk off a cliff because you're like trying to search this person's voice or she makes you like go into the ocean and you drown basically like like you just hear somebody that you love as a voice uh, like a relative or something anyways so me and my brother we were in my aunt's house and we were going to sleep over it right and suddenly like we're we're playing cards outside and suddenly we hear we hear my cousin's voice and he's like ahmed mariam like can you come help me real quick i really need help and i got chills all around <laughs> my body and my brother's like oh like muhammad's calling for us i was like no like, <laughs> i poke my head out the window and i don't see anything i'm like i immediately start reading quran i'm like please make this thing go away and and like she keeps on yelling for us and i'm like I'm gonna just admit that. like please 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 and he opens the door and he starts walking outside i'm like <laughs> what are you doing get back inside and this i don't know if this boy was stupid i don't know what's going through his brain but he's like muddy he's literally calling for us he needs help i'm like like i'm i'm not go ahead Go ahead, I'm not going. And he's like, are you stupid? Come with me. Like, what if something takes me? I was like, you're missing the point. 
<laughs> so anyway, this thing that like, keeps on calling for us. I swear to God, this thing called for us like four times. And I'm literally poking my head out the window. <laughs> and my brother is like poking his head out the window. And he's like, hold my legs. I'm going to keep on going. Hold your legs. <laughs> this, is a, uh, this is a drop. We're on the second story. I'm like, this is that lady. She's trying to check us again. This is the ghost. He's like, just hold me. Like, hold me. And I'm going to keep on looking out the window to see if he's like around the house. I was like, after it's not worth it. I missed out. If he needs help, he can find someone else. He, he wants the eight year old to help him. <laughs> he can find someone else. Basically, what the, the gag of the story is Muhammad was a bed. <laughs> I was asking her, I was like, where's Muhammad? Like, I heard him calling for us yesterday. He wasn't even there. You know where he was? He was at a friend's house. So that's. That's mine and the has story, and I swear this happens, and I am so scarred of it. So, yeah. Okay. My wife and I lived on a county road between Salem, Missouri, and Rolla, Missouri. We got up to go to work. It was a spring day, and it was still dark when we left for work, and I pulled out of the driveway and got up at the top of the hill, and the road kind of turned. And as soon as we made that little turn in the road, the headlights hit this it had to have been a Bigfoot because it was standing right in the middle of the road and it really Big looked boy. shocked that somebody had caught it. And it, it was windy and you could see that the hair was like blowing because it had pretty long hair. By the time we got there, it had turned and stepped across a ditch and then stepped across a barbed wire fence. But from where we were at, I would have judged it to have been taller than my truck and I had a four-wheel drive truck and had a lift kit on it, so it was... It was pretty high, so I would have guessed it probably had been eight foot, nine foot tall, but it, it was it was big, it was massive, and uh, I'm just, I'm glad that both of us saw it. I never did go out deer hunting after that for probably three or four years till I mean, like the sun was way up in the sky. It, it was huge. My wife. Bigfoot. Proof. Proof right there. I want to believe. <laughs> Alright, I think that's it for this video. I don't feel good. I want to do more videos. And I want to do some other stuff I have to do today. Also, my cat's in the background telling me that it's like time for food or something. So, <clears throat> I got to get go in and take care of my fat cat so anyway thank you guys so much for watching thank you for subscribing if you already have don't forget to subscribe if you haven't and i'll see you in the next video bye